Hey guys, this is Jom and welcome to Civil Raja, your gateway to future. So guys, today's session is going to be very important for you if you are are willing to go into the detailing field. So first of all, what we have to do, we have to take an architectural plan, then we have to design that plan uh, in the Star Pro or uh, Tecla Structural Designer or ETF. So whatever the design software you are using, if you have to design that, then using those design results, we have to prepare our final drawing. And uh, most of the institutes out there are teaching you how to like make the plans how to do the design in a stat pro and how to take out the results from the rctc then they are also teaching you how to use the etabs and safe and then they are also guiding you over the tickler structural designer but there are very few institutes that are actually telling you how you have to prepare the final drawing and here in civil raja you are going to learn and so be prepared for that now for uh, like uh, detailing uh, what we need we need an architectural plan then we need a structural drawing I, and if the structural engineer is good enough then he will uh, like uh, make uh, your uh, like layouts like beam layouts and the column layouts in such a way that you don't even need a architectural plan so if the uh, like uh, a structural layout is good then you don't need it otherwise you will also need the architectural plan to just overlap it and check it like if it is good or not so i have already checked all the details and finally my plinth beam layout is ready over here and i am going to do the detailing of the plinth beam in today's session so obviously if you are a beginner or even if you are like uh, somewhat uh, experienced then it will take a lot of time like uh, two to three hours will be invested if you are going to do the detailing in the proper manner now <clears throat> what i'm going to do over here i will just uh, show you my autocad drawing first and uh, here you can see this is my autocad drawing and here is the plan for the ground floor and you can see i have already drawn the uh, like center line over here now this is the first floor plan and then uh, we have we took this center line to the stat pro and uh, there we have designed it after that we have went to rcdc for the detailing work and uh, obviously we have generated a few more results from there like uh, in the rcdc you can design everything and uh, like uh, it will uh, like minimize your work if you are uh, willing to take out the results directly from the stat and directly start working on generating drawing then you can also do that manually but if you are using the rcdc then obviously a lot of your work uh, time will be saved and uh, your work will be more effective if you are using the rctc so if you want to join our professional training then you know what to do you have to just call on the number that is being shown on the screen that's 8433248864 and you can whatsapp or call me and you can inquire about our batches then you can see here everything has been done and uh, the column layout and the foundation layout are ready and uh, here we have the plan for that and here we have the section for that then we have the column schedule present over here now we are are ready with we are ready with um, our plinth beam layout also so in today's session we are going to do the detailing of this plinth beam so here we have all the details like the center line diagram is there then the what is the name of the uh, like uh, beam that is there and uh, then we have proper placing of the columns and you can see uh, all this drawing has been already properly aligned by our, by our structural engineer okay so now what we have to do we have to do the detailing so uh, it took me almost three hours to complete this thing but uh, i will not take that much of your time i will just uh, uh, give you quick insight on how to do all these things so you can see everything is already prepared over here and i am going to show you what is the like uh, way to do all this thing okay so let's uh, jump to our screen where i am going to do the detailing work okay so first step is to properly study the layout that you, uh, is given to you and then what we have to do we have to just uh, uh, like uh, make the grid lines in a proper way so for that i am just extending these lines and then i am just uh, moving all the things over here and you can see i have taken the grid line one over here uh, which is named as grid a okay now uh, from any previous drawing i'm just going to copy my columns and the reinforcement arrangement because the end columns are normally the same and you can use the same layout for your detailing so uh, i have picked the left column and now i'm going to pick the right column from here and then i have to place some rewards also so you can see uh, i have just 
like uh, drawn a black line over here because our so working in zero layer so what you can do either you can switch to uh, the layer in which you have like uh, drawn your column so that you can uh, draw the extra lines over here and uh, the basic thing is uh, any method that you are using you can use it i have used the match property over here but what you need to uh, focus over here is that you are using the same color combination for everything like uh, i am uh, keeping my column in the pink so i will show all my columns in pink over here reinforcement i am picking in blue and the beams the interconnecting beams that are shown over here in black color okay then we have to also mark our zones the ht1 zone ht2 zone i think you know about it but uh, uh, like if you want to know a brief of it then these are the zones where we are going to place our tie beams in that particular manner okay so how to calculate these zones if you are talking about the top bars then you know that in beam we have whenever you have to put the extra bar then that is 0.3 l okay so and l is the distance between two grid lines that is center to center distance of the supports in this case we have the columns but uh, it's not like in every case we will have the columns as the supports in some cases you can also see that few beams are considered as support over here then what we have to do next we have to simply mention the sizes of the beams okay and once everything is marked then we have to mark the reinforcement over here okay so for that either you can just um, uh, use your previous drawing and take the reference or you can simply draw a leader line so for to draw the leader line what you have to do you have to use the Q leader command or the leader command that is shown over here. I will use the both methods methods over here. So you can just go ahead and use that. Now what we have to do, we have to come to the RCDC results and you can see we have a long chart of the RCDC result over there and using that chart, I have to simply just to mark my reinforcement now you can see since I have copied this reinforcement from the previous drawing. So it is uh, like uh, giving me a larger reinforcement but i have to restrict it to the 900 mm so i am using the stretch command for this okay now you can see i have to join these two extra reinforcement whenever i have to do the detailing of beam and this is not the end point so we have to join the reinforcement over there so basically the detailing is done so that if a site engineer is looking at the drawing then he can simply draw it in the professional manner okay now you can see we have this leader line over here now if you will draw the leader line like this then it will not be very much effective so i am using the q leader option so what is the difference between the leader line and the q leader you you can simply use the leader line and uh, it will draw a single line but if you are using the q leader line then it will allow you to move it like i have used it and moved it over here then you can simply just mark the reinforcement and enter what is the reinforcement that is being used over here so in this drawing our top bar was four bars of 16 mm dia and then this extra top bar is of two bars of 12 mm dia and you can see i have marked it properly over here now it's time to mark the details of the bottom reinforcement so if you are having a single reinforcement in the bottom then you can simply use it like this okay so I'm using the three bars of 25 mm dia and this result has been extracted from the beam schedule that has been generated in our RCDC. Okay, so if you are using the RCDC, obviously you avoid a lot of manual calculation. However, if you are willing to go for the man manual calculation, then you can also go for that, but it will take a lot of your time. Okay, now what I'm doing over here, I will simply just uh, like uh, bring this uh, extra reinforcement in the same layer and for that what i'm going to use i will use the match property layer and then i will simply mark the reinforcement and uh, if you are uh, generating, the, generating the first beam then you can generate everything from there and uh, after you have used all the reinforcement then come to the final check and then delete all the extra things that you have created over here like uh, in this case i don't have any extra top bar so 
I have drawn the ta- top bar over here just to take the reference but uh, later I will delete all the top bars from there. Now this is another technique that will be helpful if you are doing the detailing. Suppose you are working on a, a single axis like uh, now I am working on the grid line P and in this grid line I have four beams. So what I will do I will change the color of the four beams that are present in the grid line P and that will be very much helpful when I have to draw things. Okay. Now. Uh, how uh, this will be helpful uh, that I will explain in a minute for now you can understand how we have to bring all these things so I have copied a column from here I have checked out my uh, plan layout that is the plane theme layout and after that I will simply just bring all the extra bars over here and all the main reinforcement so main reinforcement is going to be present in each situation so we can simply copy that but yeah extra reinforcement may be present over there may not be present over there so we do not need to always provide the lines for that like in our top beam what we have seen we didn't have the uh, like um, extra reinforcement at the top so i have drawn the line over there but i will uh, delete that later and why I am doing it, you will understand uh, in a few minutes. Okay, so now what I am going to do, I will just uh, go ahead and mark the beam names over here. Okay, so uh, beam names is marked and now uh, if you want, then you can also place the column name. However, this is not uh, very much necessary if you are going to deal with uh, like uh, detailing work. But if you are providing it, it will uh, look more precise okay so your drawing will be more precise so i'm using uh, everything in this video so that you can learn it and uh, later uh, I'm, I'm not planning to give it to the like client so i will later delete that okay i'm just showing you how to study the layouts and work according to that okay now you can see i have calculated the distance of the grid lines and actually i'm not calculated it it was already given in the uh, plane theme layout and uh, from there, I have just calculated the HT1 and HT2 zone. So HT1 zone will be 0.3L and uh, HT2 zone will be 0.15L or you can say uh, L by 6. Okay, so I'm using the L by 6 technique to just uh, calculate all these things. So guys, if you want to get the professional training for all these things, then you can simply connect me. So, uh, my number is already on the screen. So you can simply connect me through that. Now you can see. What I have to do next? I have to simply uh, mark the name of the beams and then also I have to check the property of that and accordingly I will simply change the reinforcement if required. So in this case uh, the reinforcement is 320 at the bottom and 325 at the top so that is good. Now all I have to do is to simply uh, mark the HT1 and HT2 zones over here. Now this uh, thing will be repeated for a lot of beams over here and uh, Whenever you think that your uh, distance between the two supports is very less, then you can you do not need to enter the HT2 zone. You can simply leave it as HT1 because uh, uh, that will make the drawing more complex. So I am just uh, uh, keeping HT1 in PV48. Okay, so you can see this is PV48, and I have not marked any uh, HT2 zone over there. So basically, HT1 is the uh, like uh, distance of the uh, plinth beam where we are going to uh, like uh, put our tie bars closely and ht 2 zone is the uh, place where we are going to uh, place the tie bars in a way that they are placed at a larger distance so i guess in the schedule you have uh, you have seen the that uh, provide uh, this much of the tie bar at center and this much tie bar at support so the uh, what is the distance of that support and what uh, for how long distance we have to provide that tie bar uh, closely so that is st1 and st2 is a zone where we can um, provide more spacing to the tie bars okay so that is one thing then the st1 zone is a zone where we have to provide our top extra bars and st2 is the zone where we have to provide our top bottom extra bars okay so that is another use of this zone and that's why we need to mention the distance of these zones okay so in this case we do not have any extra bars but definitely we have to provide some tie bars over here so we need to mention the ht1 and ht2 at this place also now you can see 
we are on the grid line c okay and here we have to provide the support so i am providing the supports and then in the zero layer because i am using the black color over here so in the zero layer layer i am going to create the beam now you have to join these two reinforcement so uh, if there would not have any kind of partition then join command would be enough but if you are having some partition over here then obviously those uh, join commands will not work and then you will have to use your another technique that is the stretch command for that okay now i have to name the support so i'm just uh, uh, considering the names of the supports from the uh, grid line c that is taken from the plane frame layout and now it is very easy to provide that okay now i have to just mark the st1 and st2 zones over here and again this time i will not calculate it because these grid lines are passing through the same uh, axis okay so obviously i know the distance and i can use the reference from the top and i will simply provide the length that is provided on the above axis that is axis b and wherever we do not have uh, such axis there i will have to calculate it okay now you can see i have to provide the uh, ht2 zone distance also so that i have not provided in the axis b so i will provide it later let's finish the work for the axis c first okay so you can see uh, in the pb54 there i am not providing any bottom zone because uh, obviously in the <coughs> PV54. I am just considering a single zone that is ST1, and I will place all the uh, tie bars closely over there because uh, uh, if and if I am going to figure out what is the ST2 zone, there that is coming very less over here. Now here we have the schedule. Here in the schedule you can see we have to use 416 and 412 bars. Okay, so 416 and 412 is not practically feasible if you are using a beam of 300 by 600 because the width of the beam is 300 over here and it place four, placing four bars where there will be difficult so what i am going to use i will calculate the area of the reinforcement over here so i will calculate the area of 416 bars and then i will go for the higher reinforcement that is a 20 mm bar so if i am calculating this then i will i am getting that <coughs> instead of using if i am uh, 416 bars i will use simply three bars of 20 mm tire and uh, that will be enough for it because uh, if i'm going like that then what will happen uh, if we are getting more area of reinforcement so obviously the design will be safe and it will be practically feasible if you are going to uh, like uh, use the accurate thing then obviously you can go for um, like four bars of 16 mm dia and that will be enough but that is not practically possible because uh, whenever we have to work on the site they will find that uh, we have to tie the bars over there and tying the bars with very little space is very difficult so we have to use the uh, larger dia bars in order to make it practically feasible i think you have got this point uh, and guys uh, at any point of this video you think that you have not understood any point then what you can do you can simply just uh, leave a comment in the comment section and guys if you find this video is being useful for you then you can simply uh, like hit the like button and if you are new to the channel please subscribe to our channel civil raja because on this channel you will get a lot of valuable insights uh, regarding the civil engineering field i'm also planning to upload a few videos in the coming uh, near future related to sketchup and uh, obviously AutoCAD detailing will continue whenever I am getting a new project like uh, I have got the project for this uh, <clears throat> Jawan barracks so I am making this video after that I will uh, get another project and uh, there I will do the detailing or design then obviously I will simply uh, just uh, come in front of you and explain you the projects also now you can see to just manage the space I am deleting the extra uh, beams over here that is uh, there like B39 is not of my use anymore so i will simply delete that so i have to understand the pattern and there i have to rename my beams over here so you can see here i am using just two beams now you can see i have to stretch all these um, bars but uh, stretch command is not working so what i will do i will simply use the move command and then i will delete the support whatever is not needed i can simply delete that and then i will have to uh, figure out how to make all these things so uh, here we have just two beams instead of four the as we had in our uh, above axis that was axis uh, uh, c so 
in the access tree we have just uh, two bars and from there i have to check the reinforcement so you can see 416 and 320 is being shown over here 416 at bottom and 320 at the top so four six instead of 460 16 4, mm, 4 bars of 16 mm dia i will provide three bars of 20 mm dia that will be much better because of the practical aspects now <clears throat> Uh, since I have copied this line from above, so obviously the distance of these lines will change now and uh, obviously the HT1 and HT2 zone will change. So I am just uh, figuring out how to do all these things. And uh, now I will mention the HT1 and HT2 zones. So I have to add the dimensions also like I have done in the uh, like uh, which one grid A. But I will do that. I can do that later also because uh, once these lines are drawn, then if you are using uh, one like uh, command at a time it will be very much helpful for you now i am uh, like adding the name of the supports over here and our access d is completed what you have to do next we have to simply just go for the next uh, like beam combination over here and uh, what is that our next beam will be 58 okay so first of all let's uh, fix the like a uh, name of the reinforcement over there and after that we can proceed so i will simply delete all the lines that are related to beams in order to avoid my clumsiness however the best practice is that you get a printout of this whole layout and then start your work but uh, if i will use the printout uh, then you will not be able to visualize everything in this particular uh, session so that's why i'm using this method okay like uh, i am just copying sorry i am just uh, copying my layout and uh, uh, mentioning the grid line over here okay so this is just to uh, like uh, make you understand in a clearer way otherwise you can the best practice is to take out the printout of the layout and then go for the detailing so that uh, you can analyze also and if, if in the on the screen uh, it is very difficult to like uh, figure out uh, what are the different uh, like uh, figure out what like uh, <clears throat> what are the mistakes that uh, we have over here uh, but in the hard copy it is very easy to visualize all those things okay now we have to mark the ht1 and ht2 zone so wherever we have very less space left for the ht2 there we will keep the whole uh, zone as a ht1 zone okay Now guys you can see over here what I have done in the schedule I am making the different colors okay for all the beam sections so uh, these colors are helping me to identify that uh, um, what are the beams and how many uh, what are the beams that are aligning in the same grid line so that I can provide the reinforcement easily obviously uh, the beam sizes will not uh, differ very much and actually in the most of the cases you will find the same size of the beam is being designed over there but in some cases that is very rare you will find that in the single axis we have to change the uh, size of the beam or uh, we have to change the reinforcement of the beam so like in this axis particularly if you will talk about uh, this axis e over here <clears throat> so what you will see you will see that uh, uh, this zone like uh, the beam 58 over here and beam 63 over here is not having any kind of extra beam and uh, even beam uh, pb16 and pb61 is not having any extra beam uh, extra bar sorry extra bar and beam pb59 and pb62 uh, these are having the extra bars at the bottom so you can simply draw it like this like provide the extra bars in just these two beams and leave all the beams without any extra bars so uh, since this is this extra bar is just at the bottom so it is very easy to draw all this but if it will be at the top then you will have to do something else so what is that something else that will be shown in just few minutes because obviously uh, such a case will come where we have to provide the extra bar till there only okay now we have to work on our new axis that is axis f okay so uh, i was uh, 
uh, earlier i was picking all the lines individually but uh, now i can i'm just going to use this drag command so that uh, i can select all these lines and uh, quickly and then make the changes now i have to change the name of the beams over here so since this is a copied axis so i can simply just change the name otherwise what you will have to do you will have to regenerate everything and then you will have to rename uh, like a uh, place name it new like uh, from the scratch but uh, if you are using the copy paste command obviously your work will be much faster okay now i will simply change the color of all the axis like from b64 to b69 this all these beams are lying in the single similar axis and they are having the same uh, like size that is 300 by 650 so earlier all the beams that i have seen uh, used in this uh, plinth layout they are they were having how much uh, of the size they were having the size of 300 by 600 but from here the size has changed it is now 300 by 650 okay now i will uh, like copy again because we are having the same layout over here also so i will simply copy it again and then i will rename all the supports over here okay so first of all uh, let's uh, figure out what is the uh, like um, reinforcement that has been provided over here you can see uh, in the first bar third bar and this uh, fifth bar okay like the b70 uh, and uh, then b72 and b75 these are having 416 and rest are having some extra bars like 212 extra bars and uh, in this side we are having the more maximum option of uh, 325 as the top bar however we are also seeing the 316 but uh, you can imagine by yourself that this is not a this is not possible that uh, uh a bar of 325 like a 25 mm bar is coming from the left and suddenly we have to change it to 16 mm dia bar and then again we have to change it to 325 mm that means 25 mm dia bar so that is not possible so we will use the same bar okay from here till here and, uh, and this will help you um uh, with it okay so okay <clears throat> yeah so let's continue so what i will do for instead of 416 i will use uh, 320 and wherever we have 412 we can use 316 bars as extra bars okay so otherwise if you are having 212 then you can simply use the 212 over there okay even if uh, there is uh, some option where you are getting just uh, one extra bar just provide it as the extra bars do not pro provide it as a common bar over there okay now what i have to do i need another sheet over here where i can just uh, do all this work so i will simply just uh, draw uh, like um, uh, i will not draw another sheet i will simply uh, make a copy of it and i will just uh, first of all measure the distance and i will try to like uh, arrange this thing in this sheet only but uh, obviously i don't think that it has it will work so i will have to make a copy of the sheet and from there i will just uh, do the work okay so what i need to do i need to make a copy of it and there i will start changing it okay so here you can see that i have just draw a multiple copy of the layout over here so multiple copy of the layout will be very much clumsy for us but anyway we do not need that layout over here so i will just ignore that okay now i will simply copy everything over here okay whatever is needed i will keep that and whatever is not needed i will simply delete that like the above axis are not needed so i will simply grid delete the grid lines from the above now i have figured out one more thing over here that uh, even in the bottom side of the plan layout we are having the similar beam arrangement so i think uh, a lot of things uh, will be similar and it will save a lot of our time also so you can see over here this beam is same this beam is same okay so i can just uh, use the details uh, that is provided on axis d and axis and create the axis h accordingly okay so this will be uh, very much easier for us if you will do in do it in this way 
so what i'm going to do i'm just going to split my screen into two parts in one side i will just uh, keep my layout and another another side i will simply just uh, keep my autocad screen and there i will th make the things parallel and then i will rename my axis and obviously i can rename my supports from here and it is much faster way rather than copying everything and uh, modifying it so i can simply just uh, do it i will check the reinforcement from the schedule and from there i will make the changes in the reinforcement if needed so you can see over here we need 416 and 212 so instead of 416 and 212 what we will do if we will use the 320 and uh 216 and if whenever we are having the 412 then we will use the 316 extra bottom bars okay so i have a, uh, i can find the similar uh, arrangement of the beam but the reinforcement over here has been changed so i am just changing it over here now you may have the question why this reinforcement is changing if you are having the same arrangement because this is not a completely symmetric structure but in case it would have been a completely symmetric structure then the there are high chances that uh, the design is similar but anyway we have designed it according to the uh, like uh, data uh, like <clears throat> that we have got from the software okay now i am just going to mark this axis okay and from 84 to 87 i will just provide another design over here oh, sorry another uh, details of this beam okay so let's see how to do it yeah so what technique i'm using over here i'm using this uh, grid line over here and i'm just uh, keeping everything over here and then i will rearrange all the grid lines so first of all i'm just making the changes according to the details present over here so extra bars are 412 at some places 212 at some places so i will just uh, consider the extra bars to be 412 and i will provide a 316 instead of the 412 over here okay so for instead of 416 i'm going to use 320 extra bars i will provide 316 and then in the top i have just uh, 325 so i will keep it like that okay so you can see uh, how quickly i have modified all these things so there uh, this is the technique okay so if you are using the uh, like the same technique then it you will save a lot of your time okay otherwise it will take you like uh, i don't know how many hours to do the detailing of a single um axis like i'm just uh, making the vertical axis over here and uh, it took me almost uh, okay don't worry about the time but it took me a lot of time okay so anyway if you are new then obviously it will take you, you more time than th this yeah so guys i think uh, uh, our detailing is completed over here for the vertical axis of the plane beam layout and uh, if you want to learn this in a professional way then you can simply connect me uh, through whatsapp or call and i will definitely guide you how to do all these things uh, our professional paid courses are available and uh, you can join our courses and uh, uh, that will be conducted on the zoom okay so uh, you can ask me when uh, you are available and when i am available and uh, using our account free time we can schedule a class for you the course fee is already mentioned in the description so you can check it out from there and uh, see you guys in the next video with a new topic and uh, a lot of people were saying that uh, make videos in english so i have uh, created this uh, video in english after a very long time actually on my channel i have uh, created a lot of videos in hindi so if you are from the hindi speaking belt then you can watch my videos from there and guys if you are new to the channel please subscribe to civil raja and like this video if you feel that some of uh, your friend may need this video then you can also share this with them thank you and see you in the next video